concerto in a major key. You needed cheering up a bit, it didn't did, it? It did, didn't it? It's been so sad for years, hasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> what a marvellous pleasure it is to have Stephen Wolby and Kevin Farrell with us this afternoon. Thank and you. Uh, what a pleasure. And do you know, they've just come back from Sri Lanka. So <laughs> we're, it is a great pleasure to see Thank you. Thank you. And, Likewise. and also to play the piano here at Henry Wood Hall. Mm. And for those of you who listened to the last video when uh, they came to do Carnival of the Animals, same piano, same yeah. people, yeah. slightly different repertoire. Lovely to see you. Thank and you. Um, we just want to talk about a concert that we're going to be doing at the Brighton Dome with uh, Warby and Farrell on Sunday the 1st of March at 2.45. Let's talk about a programme. Mm. So, well, the programme that we're going to um, include is going to be quite a mixed bag of boogie um, and also a lot of fun, isn't it? And we're going to do the big one that we're going to do is, well, there's a few big ones, actually. There are, there? yes. So it's quite a programme. It, it's very rhapsodic, this programme. Mm -hmm. One of the big pieces we'll be playing will be Rhapsody in Blue, Gershwin's mm -hmm. Rhapsody in Blue, which took us well over a year to put together because uh, it's the first arrangement we've ever done of a piece that was originally written for piano and orchestra, or piano and band, actually, yep. actually originally. Yes, yes. Um, mm -hmm. And um, so we've had to try and make it clear when the piano would be playing and when the orchestra would be playing. Yeah. Otherwise, it sounds like just a piano piece, but it is, we've made it very orchestral. Because as you know, we like to think of the piano as our own symphony mm. orchestra. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's the way, actually, we approach the piano whenever we're doing arrangements. I mean, the big mistake that people have always made is that because we've always been unfortunately put into the category of music, uh, musical comedy, it's not. It's music and the comedy is really the relationship, how we, uh, between ourselves and, and, the, also, audience. and the audience. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but we take really seriously the music, the arrangements. Um, and so th the way that we approach all our arrangement is orchestrally. Mm. And the minute that you start doing that, rather than the traditional, you're on the left, you're on the right, the minute you think you're orchestrally, it changes everything. So the only, quickest way is, this hand is capable of doing different things to this hand. So if this hand is in charge of the horn section, this hand can be in charge of the woodwind section. And yeah, these hands can be the, the bulk of the orchestra, the, the strings. strings. The strings. And yes. so therefore, yes. that's why it's not a gimmick. We're just utilising yeah. the piano to its full potential. And actually, there's a bit at the end of Rhapsody in Blue where we're literally playing the same notes yeah. uh, in this split seconds where we have to get out of each other's way. So it's quite a it's quite a demanding arrangement. But one of the other big pieces that we're doing is the Warsaw Concerto. Yes, mm -hmm. Adinzel's Warsaw Concerto. Mm -hmm. It's a bit retro, isn't it, the Warsaw Concerto? Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I absolutely love playing it. It's like having a bath in syrup. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, Philip Folk, he, 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 did, he a, did a fantastic yeah, uh, recording of the He's made it too. respectable. Again, yes, yes, it, yes, you know? yes. Yeah. You, you have yeah. to be quite careful with certain And it's quite interesting looking into the history of the piece because it was uh, obviously written for a film, Dangerous Moonlight, mm. in 1941. And ironically, uh, the, the music became more popular than the film. <laughs> film, yes. Because <laughs> yes. he really wanted Rachmaninoff, but, but I, don't, I think the story is he couldn't afford Rachmaninoff's music. Yes. So, I did tell, can you write a piece in the style of Rachmaninoff and keep it cheap? <laughs> <laughs> so, when, when you're doing this, uh, you're obviously playing the solo part, yes. and within that solo part is going to be the orchestral part. Absolutely, yes, absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, this takes some very careful arranging, because yes. that was going to be my very next question. Right. Was, obviously, notes are going to be, as you mentioned earlier, notes are going to be the same. How, how long would you spend together actually working on that? All of it together, yeah. putting it together, all of it rehearsing together, although uh, there's some, sometimes we practice separately if there's a difficult passage yeah. or something, mm. but uh, the, most of the time we rehearse together. Yeah, it, um, yeah, it, it takes, um, you know... The hardest part is starting time. a piece, is knowing how to start. Oh, it's yes. the same as anything, yes. starting a book yes. or anything yes. like that. Yes. Once we get started, we're fine. For, yes. Yeah. 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 Actually, one of the pieces, can I just say, one yeah. of the pieces in the, in the concert we're going to do uh, is a piece that we never really wanted to do, and I've never been that fond of, and it's uh, uh, Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. And uh, everyone said, you must do an arrangement of Bohemian Rhapsody. This was way before the film was made, you know. And uh, neither of us wanted to do it, really. No. As soon as we started, we fell in love with it and realised what a great piece of music it is. Yes, yes. Uh, straight it's... away, we were hooked on it, and it was, yeah. it was quite it's... difficult creating the guitar solos and all that yes. kind of thing. Yes. Sorry, you can speak. No, yes, yeah, sorry, it's very <laughs> No, it, 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 it's funny, isn't it? I wasn't actually that enamoured by Rhapsody in Blue either, because it's been done so much. Yes. But again, 
Um, when you start looking into it, you realise how brilliant it, brilliantly it's written for the yes. piano. It falls yes. under the, the fingers so well. Yeah. Um, and actually, I adore that piece. Yes. Uh, but I actually ended up being quite scared of it at first whenever we play it, but now I really look forward to playing it. But mm. I still do find it a little challenging, the certain bits. Oh, that, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, well, it's a, it, I mean, it's a major concern. Yeah, of course, form, yeah. yeah. And you're then adding the, uh, the band part. The, yeah. We are, yes. I mean, it is, it's, very, it, it's very compartmentalised, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. The piano plays and then the band That's plays. That's right. So, so yes. it does, in that respect, I mean, yes. but you're still having to do yes. both parts. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We, we, we've been playing it a couple of years, a few years now. So yeah, yeah. Right? Um, um, the more we play it, the more we love it. Yes. And, yeah. and, it, and actually, one of those pieces where I completely lose myself in it, and that's, it doesn't always happen as a performer, as you probably no. know. Yeah. And we're also doing Peter and the Wolf. Uh, the difference with our story, um, ours has a very cheerful end. Yes, the, the original, as you know, the duck uh, comes to a very nasty end. Nasty end. <laughs> yes. well, we've cheered it up a bit. Yeah. Um, but this is, I mean, this has also added another dimension that we found difficult to, um, trying to recreate the sounds of the or orchestra because it's very much an orchestral programmatic piece of mm. music. But also we're telling the narration on top of the music. Now, it's easy to do when the music stops but the difficulty we found was actually telling the story during the, the underscore of the music. Talking going whilst on. playing, it's and not also, an easy thing. No. Also, no. we've made sure that we've characterised each different member of the tale. Yes, yes. So ours is more, rather than Peter and the Wolf set in Russia, ours is set in Doncaster. It seems to be, yeah. <laughs> well, they're the only actors <laughs> that we can do. <laughs> yes. Yeah. 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 Um, but that's, I mean, what's wonderful about that piece is that and we, we, you know, we never know what to expect mm -hmm. from an audience's reaction, but it's very much a family-friendly piece of music. Mm -hmm. But adults, for the very first time we did it at the Island Man, um, we noticed how all these kind of very, very formal type people, very lovely, turn into children. Yeah. Yes. And, and we've noticed every time that we've done it that um, the children can be... They're, they're, they, get wrapped up in the whole story anyway, uh, but the adults, you know, turn into the children again. It's you lovely know. watching it, and yes. a lot of them say uh, over and over again when we perform it that they didn't want it to finish because it's, it's like having a story, a bedtime story. A bedtime story, yes. 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 Now, one of the other yes. pieces we're playing uh, is Ladies in Lavender, the, the theme from the film, which we only saw recently, of course it was made quite a while ago, uh, and we just fell in love with the music. Oh. Because it was Joshua Bell, it was written obviously for violin and orchestra yes. originally. Yes. We actually managed to get in contact with Nigel Hess, who wrote the score uh, through a friend of ours called Hugh Durrant, who's done lots of costumes for various productions of uh, the, where Nigel Hess has written the music. Um, and we desperately wanted his permission that we could turn it into piano. And he actually sent us the score. Yes. melody there and that's yes. the joy of playing that there's not heaps of notes everywhere it's just such beautiful and simple mm -hmm. and it reminds me of my piano teacher Phyllis Selick the late Phyllis Selick who knew Rachmaninoff very well and uh, it was Rachmaninoff that uh, taught her to get a really good cantable sound on the piano using the soft pads of your fingers mm -hmm. so she, she I got that from her she got that from Rachmaninoff and I always think of her when I'm playing that simple melody it's so nice that's play. very nice yes. Yes. Um, one of the other things that um, I think a lot of people will want to ask us is you sit on one piano stool. Mm. Yeah. Now, we talked earlier, well, we're both small. But even so, that does demand quite a few, again, techniques uh, of how you deal with that. And yes. Just talk, talk me through your, your the single piano stool. Well, I think it's just occurred to me, it is a question we get asked a lot, and we say it's good to be close together so we can get, you know, if we're sitting on two piano stools, it might be a little bit of a stretch. Mm -hmm. uh, we are small, as you said. But it just occurred to me one of the reasons perhaps we sit together is because it's, it's good to feel close and, we, and we, we think the same things and we're very... Uh, I, get I get scared. I get scared. Do you get, oh, do you get lonely on your own? Without <laughs> you, I'm just nothing. I can only play the black notes. I can only play. So, 
It's been a huge pleasure to have uh, Stephen Warby and Kevin Farrell here uh, talking to us about their upcoming concert on Sunday the 1st of March at 2.45, Brighton Dome. Be there. It's going to be brilliant. And it really is my birthday this time. Uh, yes. <laughs> we won't uh, say how old. <laughs> we won't say how old. <laughs> but, uh, but, but he will play happy birthday to himself. <laughs> I will. See you there. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye.